Hey everybody, Syntax77 here, and today we're going to be taking a look at a spiffy new piece of backpacking gear that I got, the Outdoor Vitals Loftech Adventure Jacket. This is a synthetic jacket that performs like a synthetic, but insulates like down. Kind of cool. We're going to go over the specs and features of this. I've had this jacket for about three weeks now. It's not available yet. It's actually on Kickstarter right now and appears to be doing quite well, but Luckily, they don't seem to be doing it by units. They're doing it by time periods. So right now, there's still an early bird special, depending upon when you watch this, of course. But as of right now, it's still available for another 10 days for 99 bucks. So I figured I'd share it with people and anybody watching this in the future. We're still going to go over everything about the jacket, features and whatnot, and my experiences with it. I've had it for about three weeks now. I've taken it both around the town just as a regular jacket. I also had the opportunity to test this out for a few days while backpacking in Zion National Park. I went out there with Outdoor Vitals and did some hikes and backpacking, as well as on some hikes over in Norway, some of which were quite wet, which is an advantage of this jacket due to the synthetic insulation inside, which we'll get into. I actually have a little sample of it right here, nice and fluffy. I'll also take it over to the gear review table for some close-up shots and whatnot as we go. I've come to really like using this jacket. Anybody out there who's experienced in backpacking knows one of the first kind of major investments you made most likely was a nice packable down most likely or possibly synthetic jacket so that you have the ability to bust it out of your pack and put it on depending on varying temperatures and conditions. A lot of the times you might think of winter for a jacket like this, but not necessarily, especially depending on where you live and hike in the country. Those of you out there who hike know that conditions can change rapidly, whether that's being in an area where the weather can change really quick, like in New Hampshire, where even in the summer it might go down into the 30s during a cold snap, either on a summit during the day or at night. You break out your jacket, you put it on, you hike a little bit, you get too hot, you take it off back and forth, right? So packability is important. Of course, those of you newer to backpacking, you can get away without a packable jacket. You can just bring extra layers, basically, maybe fleece stuff like that. Now that's going to be heavier. That's what I did in the beginning, but eventually I invested in a nice packable jacket. Unfortunately for me, uh, I didn't see an option like this available to me back uh, seven years ago when I started. So I was doing the whole kind of layering thing at first, and then eventually my wife and I both invested in some nice packable down jackets. In our case, we got some Montbells. We both got the same ones. Montbell UL Parkas. These are 800 fill power down jackets. They're really nice. They can press down small. They're both around nine ounces, but <laughs> they cost like 210 bucks a piece. Yes, this is like $400 plus worth of down jackets here. They're really nice, but I would have killed for an option like this when I first started, so that's why I want to share it with everybody out there. We'll go over the pros and cons, and you kind of make a decision for yourself, right? That's how reviews work, or at least they should. So let's go over one of the biggest factors of this jacket, and that is the fact that it is synthetic, and it behaves like synthetic, as in it will still perform when wet, and it'll dry a lot quicker compared to down, which is nice and light and compressible and fluffy, but if you get down wet, it's going to clump up, it's going to stop working, it's just... That is the kryptonite of down jackets, right? Wetness. The plus of them is that they're really light and packable. Over the years, there's been synthetic options out there. Some of them are like solid sheet synthetics that you may have seen. Other ones are like a batting kind of material. But the elusive thing for synthetics has always been chasing that dragon of mimicking down as close as possible. And with this jacket, Outdoor Vitals believes they've come up with a solution. In fact, they actually sent this to a testing facility, a lab, I believe, that just tests down to rate its fill power. Well, they actually sent their synthetic over there and said, hey, just test it like down. They came back and said it's basically equivalent to a 550 fill power down. Now, in my experience, I've been really trying to test this. I've been going back and forth wearing my old Montbell jacket as well as this in identical situations. So around the house, seeing how fast I would overheat outside, seeing how warm I stayed in different various conditions. And I can say, this isn't a scientific test or anything, but in my experience, this jacket is very similar to my Montbell 800 fill power down jacket. Now, those of you paying attention may have noticed that I mentioned that that is 800 fill power and this is equivalent to 550. So what does that mean? Well, fill power is basically saying 
for an equivalent weight of down, let's just take one ounce versus one ounce, how fluffy is it, pretty much? Or how lofty is it? How much air is trapped in there for a certain weight of down? Because when it comes to putting down in a jacket or anything else like a sleeping bag, the important factor is not the weight, but how much it lofts up. So if you take a extra lofty down, 800 fill power, you're gonna need less weight of that to get an equivalent uh, insulation compared to say something like uh, 600 fill power. So for the Outdoor Vitals Loftec Adventure Jacket, it weighs in at 11 and a half ounces versus the nine ounces on my more expensive Montbell over there. But for those extra two and a half ounces, you don't just get a price advantage, but you also get the performance advantage of synthetics. Like I said before, you can get this thing wet and damp, you're gonna be just fine. That could be on a summer trip where the temperature swings on the summit, you put this on, you start hiking, and then you're hoofing it, you're in a different condition, and suddenly you're sweating, right? Humid conditions as well, all kinds of stuff like that can affect it, as well as the obvious, which would be getting snowed on, sleet on, rain on, all that good stuff. When this gets wet, as it did for me in Norway, I was walking with this in my pack and the pack wasn't waterproof and it did get damp. I put it on, my body heat warmed it up. It performed just fine. I warmed up and believe me, I was quite cold. And then on top of that, once I got to a dry environment, it actually started drying out a lot quicker than down, which in my experience, once it gets clumpy and wet, it's gonna take a while for it to dry and get back to a condition where it's actually gonna keep you insulated. The material on this, you got two different thicknesses for the shell versus the interior to save weight. So on the outside, you have a more resilient 20D fabric, which is DWR treated. So it's gonna be weather resistant, and it's also gonna be a little thicker because 20D basically means 20 denier, and denier is a measure of, just consider the toughness of a fabric. It's actually the thickness of all the little strands, but you get the idea. So on the outside, you got the 20D, and on the inside, you have a 10D fabric because you're less likely to get abrasion type situations on the inside of your jacket, right? And that saves you some weight. You can see the pattern of stitching here to make the baffles all throughout the jacket, which does of course keep the Loftec insulation in place. Another thing I should mention about the Loftec is it's resistant to static electricity. So it's gonna be that much less prone to clumping together which I would assume enabled Outdoor Vitals to use less stitching to make those baffles and therefore it weighs less. Less baffles, less weight. Just as an example, I actually, let's go ahead and put this in some water. There you go, it's, still, it's pretty crazy. It's still fluffing up as we put it in there and uh, it will dry out pretty well too. Now, beyond just kind of backpacking and hiking applications, which I have used this for, I also like it a lot for travel. I like packable jackets in general for travel because you might be leaving on an airplane from one place and getting somewhere with a completely different climate. So I like something that I can shove in a backpack real quickly, whether it's before or after I get to a destination. I took this with me on our flight to Sweden, which we used to get to Norway, and threw it in and out of my backpack at the airport and whatnot. It's super convenient. And it also packs into itself using one of the Pockets and it becomes a pillow. So you could kind of dual purpose this and have a little pillow action for sleeping at night, which I often like to do with my down packable jackets, but usually they're packed down a bit too small. So I'll put them in a different stuff sack. In the case of this, it's, uh, it's more of a pillow shape kind of size, but there is some leeway there. If you need to shove it in a bag, it'll compress down even smaller. Speaking of wearing it around town, I don't know about you, but I'm a little what you might call frugal. So I don't really splurge on items unless they are camping, backpacking, or camera gear related. Buying clothes for myself, eh, it's just not really my thing. Not really too big on the fashion, but dual purpose is nice. And I've been wearing this around just as an everyday jacket because of the tailored fit on it. It actually works quite nice for that. They also tell me that the tailored fit is nice for those with uh, lady lumps out there. There is no male or female version of this. It is unisex and fits me pretty nicely. This one is a medium. On the side here, we have the pockets. They're nice roomy big pockets. So you can put your stuff in there or your hands to warm up because they're insulated, of course. At the bottom, I have these shock cords that allow me to tighten it so I can get a nice seal up against the pants and whatnot. You'll also notice as I stand up here that the uh, back comes down nice and low. So when you're sitting around camp or bending over, doing chores, etc., I found that it actually keeps that nice seal and you won't get drafts and whatnot. Keeps your butt and your waist warm. That's always good. On the sleeves at the wrist here, there is like an elastic banding. So that keeps it pretty tight. It's actually a nicer 
kind of sealed in my Montbell over here. Perhaps that's because my Montbell's gotten loose over the years, but it really fits the wrist um, pretty nice for me at least. And it does have good old thumb holes there, so you can do that. Put some gloves on or extra layers, and this won't slip up inside the sleeve of another shirt or layer, etc. And here's actually one of my favorite features for me personally. It's got... Let's put the thumb back on so I can do this properly. This works well together. It's got pit zips. And uh, this took me a little while to figure out too, but use that thumb hole and you can unzip and zip this really well. Now this is my first experience with pit zips on an insulated mid-layer or outer layer jacket like this. I have had pit zips before on my hard shell jackets for sure. If you're unfamiliar, hard shell's kind of like a rain jacket, your outer layer. To keep you from overheating, you can use the pit zips on the jacket to regulate your heat, basically. So on a rain jacket, it's perfect because unless it's an outright downpour, uh, I've found that you can have the pit zips open and you won't get soaked. If you combine your hard shell with this, you could actually reach through and if you're getting extra hot, unzip these and adjust them as you want. For me, since I use this jacket around town too, and it is really nice and warm, perhaps too warm sometimes, I can use this to regulate my temp. You can open it just a tiny bit and get the right temperature for your situation. And then if you're really getting hot, it goes down really low. For me, this is actually even lower than my rain jacket goes down, so you can really vent well. And then when your situation gets cold again, just zip it back up. It comes up pretty high on the neck if you zip it all the way, which for me, I found nice in Norway when I was using it with my hard shell to really kind of keep the drafts out. And then, of course, it's got the hood right there. So it is a parka, and this will add, obviously, extra insulation, especially with a hard shell top over top of that. I find that keeps me nice and toasty. In fact, my head is heating up quite nicely right now. And it's got an adjustment on the top there, that shock cord that you can adjust depending on your head or if you're wearing a hat and whatnot, and dial it in just right with that. I'll show you how it packs down. On the left-hand pocket, you will notice that there is a zipper on the inside and the outside, and that is for packing it into itself. So just get your thumbs going like so and start packing it in there. Squeeze it down, zip it up, and there's your pack down jacket. Throw it in your pack, use it as a pillow on the trail or on an airplane, whatever your case may be, and it'll be ready for you when you need it. Another nice thing that I haven't run into yet, because I haven't really gotten it that dirty, but because you can get it wet and it's not the end of the world, it's pretty easy to wash this thing, especially if you're traveling. Just wash it in a sink somewhere, hang it up, let it dry. It's not going to take forever, and you'll have a nice clean jacket again. If you're at home, uh, according to the label on here, let it dry most of the way by hanging up and air drying. Towards the end, you can throw it in a machine dryer and finish it off the rest of the way. I know for me personally, with down jackets and bags, I throw three clean tennis balls in there as well and that fluffs things up i don't know if that's beneficial for this or not but can't hurt keep it nice and fluffy so yeah there you go i would say whether you're new to backpacking and like me or looking for a way that won't break the bank to add to your gear and get started with the sport of backpacking and hiking or if you're already out there with a down jacket and you're experienced, but you want something that's going to be, especially in a critical situation like winter hiking where you really might get wet, you want an option that can get wet and keep on performing and then dry nice and quick, uh, I would say this is definitely worth looking into. So I just wanted to throw that out there, share that with everybody. Tell me what your thoughts are in the section below. Um, what do you think about down versus synthetic or... Any issues out there with synthetics? Perhaps you've used Loft Tech before. Now this jacket isn't out, but they have some products over at Outdoor Vitals that have already been using Loft Tech. For me, I think that's well worth the few extra ounces for the performance capabilities. So I think this is my new go-to jacket. And I say that reluctantly because I've really come to love over the last six years, my Mont Bell jacket here. And I do like down, but it is nice to have something that I can worry a little less about. And also for wearing around town, because I like the dual purpose, a lot of times I would avoid using this because I don't like, I try to avoid washing down as much as possible. You don't want to do it too much. I've only washed this maybe a couple times over the years, but I don't use it that much. I avoid using it. With this, I find myself throwing it on and I'm not so worried about that because I know I can easily clean and wash it later on. So that's my take on that. There's pros and cons to everything.
but I am digging the Synthetic Outdoor Vitals Loft Tech Adventure Jacket. So, till next time, I'm Syntax77, and you have fun out there. <laughs>